Hello, I'm Osman Fias, and today I'm going to talk about our work on composable fast rescue mission planning for UAVs using metric temporal logic. This is joint work with John Bars, and we are affiliated with the University of Maryland College Park. Starting with the problem description, we tackle a time critical search and rescue mission with multi rotor UAVs in a constrained environment. We deal with the safety in terms of both finite time constraints and spatial constraints. And the objective is to complete the mission autonomously while avoiding any obstacles and collisions among the UAVs themselves and meeting the finite time constraints. We put special emphasis on the complexity of the solution itself because we want it to be real time solvable and onboard computable. A quick literature review of the work uh, that is done in the area over the past few years. A lot of work has been done in safe trajectory planning for UAVs using methods like potential functions, optimization based techniques, and sampling based methods. Uh, temporal logic planning using both linear and metric temporal logics, employing methods of optimization as well as time that automata based approaches has been, have been used. But there are a, a lot of shortcomings in the existing methods, including some of the ones that are listed here. And the main motivation of this work is to get around these problems and to come up with a method that is computationally tractable, has some scalability results, and uses rich dynamics while having to meet finite time constraints in the mission. So we present a hybrid uh, optimization-based framework for rescue mission planning for UAVs under the assumption of known environment. And we use a hy hybrid dynamical model with rich dynamics for the UAVs. We present a systematic decomposition method for decomposing complex mission into simpler subtask and formulate the problem as a mixed integer linear program by translating MTL specifications to linear constraints. We show by simulations that our resulting composable trajectories are fast to compute, close to real time. And despite the loss, loss of global op optimality, our method is scalable for a large number of UAVs. So throughout this presentation, we'll refer to this workspace a lot. So it's worth going into some details around here. Uh, this is a customized design CAD environment we'll use for our methods demonstration as well as experiments. So the idea is that UAVs from their starting positions have to evacuate some targets at these locations and take them to safety at the marked locations. While doing so, they have to pass through a window E, which has a dimension such that only one UAV can pass at a given time. So they have to avoid each other uh, for a collision in particular at C. Um, the areas of interest on the map are marked, as you can see, with uh, different letters. And we will use a prime notation later on, which uh, means that the UAV is in a particular 2D region, but the altitude along the Z direction is changing. Our refresher on metric triple logic, atomic propositions are statements on state variables that can be either true or false using these atomic propositions and an environment map of the workspace, we can build up a map L with which we can start defining MTL formulas and different operations uh, in reg with regard to the system trajectory uh, as shown in these definitions. Uh, notice this notation uh, at the bottom. This essentially means that the system trajectory XT satisfies a certain MTL constraint phi one from time t to t double prime. We will follow this notation throughout our formulations. In addition to these uh, uh, MTL operators using the grammar definition, always and eventually these two operators will be frequently used in this presentation as well as in our work throughout the paper. So for example, for the workspace shown before, a sample specification for quadrotor Q1 
can be written down as follows. Again, the prime notation here indicates that the quad order is within the same 2D region F, but there's a variation in its altitude along the Z direction. Moving on to the quad order dynamics, we use a hybrid model as stated before with five different modes, uh, namely takeoff, land, hover, steer, and grasp, which is a action or uh, mission specific uh, mode. So all these four modes are basically a linearization of the general nonlinear dyna dynamical model of the system. And each of this linearization is done about a different operating point. Uh, and, it, and the end result of each mode dynamics look like a simple uh, regular discrete time linear dynamics. Uh, the details of this linearization and the selection of rating points can be found in the paper as well as in Garcia's work. Notice that GRASP is the only action specific uh, mode of the system. And it's it's not straightforward to see how you can model it as a, as a system dynamics. So it turns out under some assumptions such as passive aerial grasping uh, which results from our previous work. We can decompose the grass mode and present it as a three state automaton with hover, land, and takeoff modes. This way we can simplify this action specification and represent it as a mission specification. This simplifies the problem greatly because grasping in general is a very challenging problem and it's hard to model uh, its dynamics. So moving on to the formulation, as said before, we specify the mission as a metric topologic formula as shown. And here J uh, defines a neighborhood set for each UAV, uh, which is uh, governed by a parameter rho as shown. So for example, for quarter Q1 in the two UAV case, a mission specification can be written as follows, where uh, it states the following, that eventually the quadrator has to go to location F where the object is within T1 time units and always it has to stay there uh, for T2 units. Basically this model is the grasping action and eventually always within T3 units, it has to go to the safe zone and stay there eventually, stay there forever while avoiding all the obstacles O and the other quadrant Q2 in the area. So we end up with the formulation that is a general optimal control problem with the cost function and a bunch of linear modes or dynamics of the system. And there's a satisfaction constraint on the trajectory of the system for this specific MTL specification. Notice that there are multiple dynamical modes of the system. So we need to select what mode should be present in order to solve this problem. So to simplify the problem, we decompose the original mission specification into several types of subtasks using this theorem. The proof of this theorem follows directly from Schlinger's work. Uh, this theorem basically states that each MTL specification can be decomposed into M uh, sub specifications if this condition is satisfied. Notice that this is not an equivalence relationship which means the decomposition is not unique. So how do you choose a particular decomposition? A smart way to do it is choose a decomposition such that there's only one dynamical mode of the system associated with each subtask. And this is exactly what we do, examples to come later in the slides. And then doing this, we end up with a problem where we choose the cost function to be uh, linear and then we have one dynamical model of the system associated with each subtask specification phi i k, uh, and this is the satisfaction constraint for each subtask. So you end up with m subtask problems uh, as compared to one problem with the original mission, original mission specification. So the next step is to translate the MTL specification to mixed integer linear constraints in order to be able to solve the problem using uh, optimization solver. So the details are 
uh, available in the paper as well as from the works of Karaman and Zhu. So the key idea here is to use the concept of constraining a trajectory within a convex polytop. And we know that convex polytops can be represented as intersection of finite number of linear half spaces. So combining these two, you can represent atomic proposition on a state trajectory as a conjunction or disjunction of convex polytops. In doing so, we end up with several mixed integer linear constraints for a given MTL formula of the form like this, where you have atomic proposition on the trajectory A and B, and integers like caps, capital M and epsilon. So the end result of all this procedure is that you end up with a mixed integer linear program for each subtask. And where you have replaced the satisfaction constraint of a system trajectory on a certain MTO uh, specification to a bunch of mixed integer linear constraints. So in summary, instead of now solving the general optimal control problem one, we have M number of MILPs for M subtask. And each is exactly associated with one dynamical mode of the hybrid model. So we end up with this formulation where you have a linear cost, a specific linear dynamical mode of the system, and then you have a bunch of linear constraints corresponding to each uh, subtask. Notice that the complexity of this optimization problem is still exponential where M it represents the number of house spaces required to represent a certain satisfaction constraint in terms of linear constraints, and T is the discrete time horizon. So it makes sense now to see that decomposing a complex mission specification into simpler subtasks is essential to decrease the problem complexity or to make it kind of tractable to be solved in, in comparatively faster times. And, and that is indeed the case as we will, as we will see in, in the results. So solving these uh, set of problems results in optimal paths corresponding to each subtask and their existence guarantees safety and finite time completion uh, of the mission, which is by design. So for final trajectory generation, it is generated recursively over time by composing all the individual optimal subtask trajectories. So as you can notice, the final path is therefore not optimal, but suboptimal. However, the advantages you get despite the loss of this global optimality are far more important as we'll see in the next slides. That is the reduction in computation complexity of the problem and also some scalability features with respect to a large number of UAVs. Uh, figure on the right shows these uh, individual subtask trajectories in different colors and the final trajectory that is the concatenation of all these subtask trajectories. The circle here represents the waiting time for quad order Q2 while it has to wait for quad order Q1 to pass through the window E in order to avoid collision. Some implementation details. We solve this set of problems using Yalmap CPLEX uh, solver with a MATLAB interface using a uh, portable Intel NUC uh, PC. And the time horizon for simulation uh, was used as 30 discrete steps. So some simulation uh, results. So here's a decomposition of the mission specification for quadro Q1 and Q2 in the two quadro case. Uh, these are all the specifications for subtask, and these are the corresponding dynamical modes of the system used in optimization. Uh, these are the same resulting trajectories as shown before. And uh, these are the timing uh, analysis for, for this optimization. Uh, it is shown that the execution of the mission uh, is, is flawless and all the timing constraints are satisfied. As far as the computation times go, uh, you can see it's, it's very fast. And why we call it real time is because even 10.3 seconds is real time when you think of it as a recursive computation. Now for scalability results, we increase the number of UAVs in the same environment with same uniform timing constraints until at least one of the timing constraints is violated for any subtask. So resulting suboptimal final trajectories for n is equal to six quarters are shown in the figure on the right. Uh, the same uh, notation before, as before is used for uh, showing 
the discrete number of steps that each quarter has to wait at C in order for the quarters to pass through the window E. The timing analysis that is available in the archive version of the paper also shows that all constraints are satisfied for n equals to six case. However, interestingly, the system fails to have a solution for n greater than six, which is all right for the following reasons. As you increase the number of UAVs beyond six, they have to wait a lot more at this position C for other quadrants to pass through window E in order to avoid collision. And hence, the same timing constraints cannot be satisfied for more than six quadrants. So this essentially gets to show the limitation of the workspace and not the method itself. And it also highlights that there's no value of increasing the number of agents in this particular environment for these specific timing constraints, uh, which is of some value. In conclusion, we presented a hybrid optimization-based framework for rescue mission planning for UAVs and a systematic decomposition method for uh, simplifying the problems computation complexity and be able and to be able to solve it as a uh, set of readily solvable mixed integer linear programs. We showed by uh, our experiments that the resulting trajectories, although suboptimal, come with the advantages of scalability as well as fast computation, uh, w which is important. For future direction, we are interested in designing optimal allocations for timing constraints among the subtasks. In this work, we only use uh, flexible and uniform distribution of these timing constraints. We are also interested in the robustness analysis of the method, both for space and time, and also for uncertain changes that happen in the environment for which we need self-monitoring and self-correction. Uh, thank you for your attention. And if you have any questions, please feel free to contact us.